Hi guys, here's another Raspberry Pi project for you. By the end of this video you will have Home Assistant running on your Raspberry Pi and you will be able to start configuring and managing your smart home. I bet many of you want to dive into this smart home world, but maybe you don't know where to start. You are in the right place. If you're planning a new house or have one already, don't worry, this works for everyone. The one thing you need to start is the brains of your smart home, and this tutorial is all about it. The brain of your household will be a free open source application called Home Assistant, running on a cheap single board computer named Raspberry Pi. Its net cost should be under 100 bucks. This one brain will be able to monitor and control all kinds of devices in your household. Imagine lights, garage doors, security cameras, thermostat in the house or in the pool or in the aquarium, door locks, water heater, uh, sound system, sun blinds, and anything and everything powered by electricity, which is basically everything. And you will be able to control everything also from your phone with a single tap or using voice assistants like uh, Siri, Google or Alexa. Do you know what I believe to be the best and easiest way to run Home Assistant? Running it on Raspberry Pi in Docker container, preferably using Portainer for simplicity. If you have a different approach to this, let me know in the comments. So let's cut to the chase. How do you install and run Home Assistant on your Raspberry Pi? Let me tell you this right here. This tutorial will also work for all kinds of devices, not just Raspberry Pi. So if you have something similar at home already, go grab it and let's do this. It's just two steps. One, this is the only true prerequisite. You need to have Raspberry Pi or a similar computer with a running Docker environment. For that, you can use these short tutorials of mine. This one is for the download and installation of Raspberry Pi OS to your SD card. And this one is just for installing Docker, but you can skip it and just do this one-liner to install Docker. curl-fssl get docker.com and pipe it to shell. Wait for the download and installation process to finish and add your user to the new uh, Docker group sudo usermod-ag docker user. After that, log out and log back in into your Raspberry Pi so the user groups propagate correctly. This is all you truly need to run Home Assistant in Docker. Now the second step. You only need to start up a Docker container with the proper configuration. Don't worry, I'll give you a file with everything you need. The link will be in the description down below. There are a few ways you can do this, but I'll show you two of them uh, that I like the most. Basically, because they are easy to follow and understand and are, in my opinion, the quickest solution. The first is launching the Home Assistant using Portainer Web GUI, and the second is launching the Home Assistant container from a terminal using Docker Compose. Okay, if you don't know what Portainer is or how to use it, pause here and look at my Portainer tutorial. It will explain everything to you. So, launching Home Assistant. I'm in on my Portainer dashboard. Let's head to Stacks and hit Add Stack. Fill in the name of your stack, let's say Home Assistant. Use a Web Editor option and paste the contents of the Docker Compose YML definition file I provided you in the description below the video. If you want to, you can edit your time zone and volume location, but it's not necessary. Scroll down and hit Deploy Stack. Wait for the deployment process to finish, and that's it. Now you have your Home Assistant up and running. Wow, how simple was that? One thing I need to warn you about. It happened to me once that after some time in deployment process, Portainer showed an error about not being able to start a Home Assistant stack, but it was actually a false positive. It just took him a little bit more time on the background to launch, so just sit tight and wait for him to finish the job. When it says it is started, give it at least good 30 seconds to really have all the things inside the container up and running. 
Now, just head to the web browser and open the IP address of your device where you launched Home Assistant with port uh, 8123. Okay, that's one way of launching the Home Assistant. The other one is to use a command line and make basically the same as with the portainer. Jump to the terminal, create the directory for the definition file, uh, let's say make dir p uh, home docker home assistant, change directory to it, cd home docker home assistant, and create the definition file here, nano docker compose.yml. Paste here the contents of the file I provided you with, make changes to it if you want to, save the file and exit it. And now just launch the container, docker compose up d and wait. Again, as with the portainer, when it says it is started, give it at least good 30 seconds to start up everything. Only after that open a web browser with the IP address of your device with port 8123. And as you can see, Home Assistant is running and waiting on us to play around with. If this video brings you value, please be so kind and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. So, let's go ahead. Fill out your name, username and password to create an account. Set up name for this home assistant. Select time zone, uh, set the elevation of your home. Set the unit system you want to use and choose currency. And hit next. Decide if you want to share some of your anonymized, da anonymized data. Next. Yay, something is finally happening. Here you can see devices or in Home Assistant terms, integrations that were automatically identified on your network. In my case, it automatically identified Apple TV, my printer, my NAS, my HomeKit and some Netatmo devices. That's kinda nice. I can clearly see that the basic functionality of Home Assistant is working fine. Ok, let's skip this and show you around. After logging in, you will see a dashboard or uh, overview. Right now, I'll admit this looks pretty dull, nothing is here. Well, this probably isn't something you expected. But don't worry, things will get better in time after you will start to add smart devices to your home assistant. I'll tease you here a little bit for the future. Your dashboards would look something like this, or this, or this. That's beautiful, right? What you are looking at right now is a mobile version of home assistant. Yeah, Home Assistant has got a mobile, iOS and Android applications. And will be able to control everything you'll create from your phone. And not only that, basically you won't need to tap your phone to do something. You can ask Siri, Alexa or Google to perform tasks you want them to. Imagine the possibilities and sky's the limit. Ok, I think that's enough for this intro tutorial. Go ahead and play around with your Home Assistant. I'll do more deep dive into it in the future videos. But don't leave just yet. I've got one more piece of crucial information for you. As you probably know, Raspberry Pi runs on an SD card by default. And that's fine for a lot of use cases, but not for this one. SD cards have a limited lifespan and their length of life is directly correlated to the number of writes to them. This is a simple fact. Take my word for this. Home Assistant will burn through your SD cards like crazy. Just forget about them and migrate your Raspberry Pi to an SSD drive. It's the only reasonable medium to run it on. It's easy and quick. If you're looking for a tutorial on that, I've made one for you. The link is somewhere up in the corner. Do it now before your SD card dies and you lose your data. Believe me, please. Wow, you made it this far. Nice. Last warning. Home Assistant is a major rabbit hole. Dive in only if you have time and commitment to spare. Thanks for watching, take care and bye!